Welcome to the 51st episode of the MC Knitting Adventures podcast. My name is Colleen. And my name is May. Welcome to returning viewers. And for those of you watching us for the first time, we're glad you could be here. Today's craft adventure will be Colleen <laughs> unboxing these cute little animals. Amagurumi. And it's by Janine Holmes. And also we'll be talking about a toilet paper holder. So stay tuned for that. But before we begin, Colleen will talk about what we're wearing. So let's first of all talk about what May is wearing. So, amazingly enough, this is kind of almost how it all started. So this is the Anguli Cowl by Hilary Smith Callas. And what I did, I used um, finesse, it's King Cole finesse, which is cotton and silk DK. And this pattern calls for fingering weight yarn, so I had to do a little bit of playing with it. And I picked up the gray and the pink. And instead of using the striped pattern in the pattern itself, I just alternated every other row. So because it's garter, I used worked two rows of one color and then worked two rows it of the other. It turned out great, don't you think? You know what I like about it is I didn't have to finish in 900 ends. So because of that, it was just, there were ends at the beginning and ends at the end. So I don't know much about that, but I know it turned out well. It looks really, really good on you. I'm really, really yeah. happy with that. Thanks. And I like it because it's one of the first ones that we like we did. Exactly. Or you did. I say we, the royal we, <laughs> <laughs> that you did. Right. And um, I always loved that first one. It was just, oh, it's awesome. It always feels good and it fits perfect. And this good. is kind of the same feel when I put this on. I didn't know that when yeah. I put this on, but I thought to myself, it has the same feel as that first one. Right. So cotton and silk. It's kind nice. of nice. So that's the first thing. And what I'm wearing is the Yumi by Isabel Kramer. Now you can see there's a long sleeve part and a short sleeve part. That's kind of awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Would you wear well, sweater like that? It's just to show you both possibilities. <laughs> oh, okay. So, so um, I knew that. <laughs> I know you did. So anyway, what the yarn is, is it's called uh, Granville by Valley Yarns. So it's 90% cotton and 10% merino. So the merino will, wool will help it kind of hold its shape a little bit um, and I like it it's kind of got some open work short sleeves are going to be great for summer so I'm really really happy it looks that. great on you it looks awesome no thank you yeah so that's a great job thank you I appreciate that so that's what I'm wearing and next we're going to talk about finished objects my first finished object is the rocket tea by Tannis Lavely of Tannis Fiber Arts, and I used Polka Dot Creek Classic Sock. And here it is. So you saw this before. Blocking is amazing. That's all I'm saying. So you blocked this as well. I you're blocked saying, oh it. Oh my so. gosh, this feels beautiful. Yeah, I'm really, really happy with it. Wow. So it's very subtle. I know that sometimes the stripes can be really strong depending on the contrast, but I'm really happy with it. It's got a nice sleeve. And I think it will be nice kind of for a cool night in, oh, the, yeah. in the summer. So beautiful. I'm really, really happy with that. It feels so soft. It is. I don't, I, you know, I didn't, I knit for lots of years and didn't know about blocking. But I'm really thrilled, and it helps. It's an I cord edges, and it really, really helps. I'm did you see how nicely I folded that? You would be you'd, impressed. Yes, you did it kind of worked well. out. Very nice. Yes, you did very well. Well, as soon as you said you blocked it, I thought I better be very careful. <laughs> it is. Okay. It's a great pattern. Um, I just needed two skeins. I used two fingering weight skeins, um, and so it's a great thing if you've got a couple that. I mean, in all honesty, I purchased that yarn to make a shawl, and now I have a summer weight sweater. So I'm happy with that. Voila. So that's the first one. Now, the second and the third of finished objects of mine are the Ankers uh, Summer Shirt by Petite Knit. Now, you've knit one of these before in a different color. Correct? Right. So I knit it in a navy. Now, the first one, I used some Mary Maxim Mellow Spun DK. And I had bought this to make some vest, and I had... Um, decided to rip it out and I'm glad I did because this is great now I have this little sweater I'm really happy with it um, so that is going to be nice now this is acrylic but I'm happy with it it makes it a little less expensive and you can wash acrylic wash it dry it yep put it in the dryer go. exactly no I'll put it in the dryer I probably won't put it in the dryer but you but can you could you can I'm pretty oh. sure that it says let me read nice. the instructions I'm lying to you. It says, um, no, it does say you can dry. Wow. Machine washable and dryable, wash using gentle cycle, tumble dry using low heat for maximum of five minutes and remove and lay flat. Wow. Beautiful. So I'm happy with that. 
And you should be. It's beautiful. Thank you. It looks good on you. It's I really on. like that detail at the top. So if any of you are trying to figure out the first sweater you might want to try, yeah. this one, the Same pattern here. is really well laid out. And the other thing is they just recently um, increased the sizes that were available in the pattern. Now, I like this because... Um, there's a little bit of stretch to a little bit of exactly. give to it, so it's perfect. Yeah. yeah. I'm really happy with yeah. that. Yeah. Nice. Now, you've made another one of your finished objects? Or? I did. So there's another one of these, and May's going to put up a picture here. And so the lovely model is uh, May's mom, and for her birthday, which mm -hmm. we're a little early, but we decided we would get her that sweater. So um, I, it is Barocco Vintage DK. And I'll get May to um, take a picture of the ball band um, in a navy color. Beautiful yarn to work with. Um, and it suits your mom. Now, yeah. your mom and I have different shapes. Right. And yet it suits both of us yeah, equally as well. So she loved it. It fit great. And, exactly. Uh, yeah. So, so I'm really, she really, really appreciated thrilled. that. Yep. So yeah. I'm I'm happy with it. You know, sometimes when you're knitting for somebody else, yeah. I wasn't sure. And I had debated, do I let her try it on? Do I not let her try it on? What should I do? You were a help because we kind of put it on you just kind of to help right. with the length of it. Right. Um, so that was really helpful. So those are my finished objects. And May, any finished objects for you? I do have a finished object, but I'm not going to be talking about my finished object until we go into um, the craft adventures. Oh, perfect. All right. Yeah. So we can do that then. All right. So next we're going to talk about works in progress. My first work in progress is a shawl. Now it's called the Doctor Who Shawl Triangle with Lace Trim. And this is by Jennifer Thiel. And she is actually the yarn therapist. And so the yarn that I am using is her yarn. And it is called a shawl gradient. So she has figured out the math. Can't even imagine how much work that is. So that as you build up this triangle shawl, the stripes in the um, one that I chose are the same size. That's now, a lot of Now, if I remember correctly, when you were opening this up, you said the instructions said to make sure that you took it from the middle or something? From the center. From the center. Yep, it says start at center. So the key thing here is follow instructions because right. I don't always read the instructions <laughs> until after. I would have probably done That's it all true. backwards and then read the instructions. So you can get, um, the yarn therapist has skeins that are for the yoke of a sweater um, or for a shawl. And so this one is designed for a shawl. So here we go. Now, I, I can't believe when you say this, how she did this, how she figured this I out. I don't know either. So I'm going to ask That's maybe why they call her the therapist. <laughs> you need a therapist after you finish figuring this one out. So here it is. This is called Romantic Goth. Of course, it's got purple and some pink in it. So I'm really happy with this. We'll be careful because I'm just about to the end. And then I'm going to tell you my tale of woe, which really isn't bad okay. at all. So I'll hold so, this up. Okay, you do that. Okay. So I was busy working on this. And I thought I had left enough yarn, and then I did not. And so I wasn't going to be able to get all the lace detail at the end. So I thought, okay, I'm going to take it back. And the other thing is the final, this is the final that much amount, was a different color than was up in the shawl. And it's not that it's a problem. You could easily have done that. And I chose not to do that. Um, this is enough that I can use it to make maybe a baby pair of socks or do something like that. Um, but I thought I'm not, I'm five foot two, not a huge person. So um, I just decided I think it's big enough. I think it will do what it needs to do. So I'm really just about to the point that I have to bind off. I have enough yarn to do that. Um, and so I'm excited about that. Nice. It'll be nice with some And fun. it has a little bit of cashmere in it. Oh, that's why it's so Yes. Soft. Now, I have a ball of yarn stuck between my feet, <laughs> which is a whole other conversation. <laughs> and here's what's going to happen. Oh, you're unraveling as we speak. Exactly. How so. long is this? Because this could be a short video. <laughs> there. <laughs> there <you go. laughs> Holy smokes. The things that happen when you're trying to, <laughs> trying to do your work. All right. So that's the first thing. Now, the second thing I'm working on is called the Hug Shot by Casapinka. And over the last weekend, um, it was if you went to your local yarn store and purchased two skeins of yarn, um, they are both fingering weight, um, to make this, that you could get the pattern free. Well, wow. Which is a great thing, except if you have a stash. 
and there's lots of times that you've bought two skeins of yarn to make a shawl. So I decided that I would pay for the pattern and not worry about ordering yarn. Mm. So I'm using stash. Oh, wow. That will make you very oh, happy. Oh, that's nice. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm really, really happy with it. So here are the yarns that I'm doing. I am using this lovely, um, it's called Plum 5605 by Cascade Heritage Sock Yarn. There you go, Plum, and that looks like a plum color. It does, and the speckled yarn that I'm using has a plum in it. It's actually Ancient Arts Yarns, and it's called Tea and Biscuits, and it's Sock Natto. So I'm really happy with it, and here's how it's coming out so far. Nice. So, oh my gosh, I love this. It reminds me of a, a certain kind of ice cream that I have. I, I like that kind of ice cream. Blueberry ripple? Yes. Oh, like that. there you go. Yeah. Now, I'm using some new needles, um, which we're going to talk about in souvenirs. Okay. Um, but I just want to mention it um, is that they're bamboo. But I'll talk to exactly about okay. what kind of bamboo ones. Right. They're nice and light to work with, and I'm quite happy. I with love them. this color. It does really remind me of ice cream. I know. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. See, she said ice cream now. Guess where I want to go. <laughs> we can't really pause no. the thing and go. So we will wait. All right. The next thing I'm working on is called the Mistake Lace Shawl. And that's by Robbie Laughlin. And some of you will know of him. It's a book, an ebook that he put out, which is called Architect texture architecture and it comes with a lot of patterns he was doing it as a fundraiser um do you have the book or i have? have it was oh. donated to me oh and well it was gifted to me and so i want to thank the person who, who donated who gave it to me um because it's got all kinds of um different patterns in it with different textures talk to my niece meredith and we decided we were going to do a uh, knit along, just the two of us, <laughs> which is cute. fun. That's so we're fun. kind of going back and forth, texting, sending pictures, pictures. And um, I'm really, really happy with it. So I'm not sure whether I'm going to put on the um, fringe at the end, but we'll have to see what's going on. When I look on. at this picture, all I see is that background. I know. Like, I think <laughs> I think there's something wrong there with that, but. I think it might be the printer ink. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it your printer ink? Oh, it's so okay. Sorry, good. whoever took that page photo. Yeah, it's I think Colleen's it's printer. Yeah, I think it's the printer ink. That's what's going on. So here is this lovely. Oh my gosh, things are oh, falling. Oh, this is around. another nice one. I'm noticing that these are very light. Is that light. on purpose because Absolutely. of the season? Absolutely. Nice. And the other thing you'll notice is these two strings attached and you'll see them go across the front this is lifelines because it is called the mistake lace shawl and it's lovely but if you drop a stitch or make your count go off let's just say oh, it's not you need pleasant. a lifeline so i have put, what i'm doing basically is putting a lifeline in working and then i'm going to put another life line in and then and i'm going to pull one that one out and then just keep moving it back now does everybody know how to put a lifeline in or is that maybe something that you need to show uh people or do you think it's kind of with through knitters that um, it's just a given that they would know how to do that if you've never done it i'll just tell you a suggestion so take your whatever it is in this case it's a shawl and push it so you're on the cord because it gives you more space in your stitches and then all I do is take a darning needle and a small piece of yarn. I did the first one, I put in some cotton and it wasn't good for this yarn. So this is just some leftover actually from my one sweater. And you just hook it through underneath all the stitches. And so the whole idea is that you can then rip back to that line and then pick up the stitches from that. Great idea. So it is who invented great. that lifeline. I don't know. Well, they were very smart. But I just dropped some oh, more. Oh, here yarn. we go. We're going to have a mess to clean up. Look at <laughs> I this. know. Okay, so we're just going to move <laughs> that there that. because okay. that is about this big and I'm not going <laughs> to unravel it. And we all. don't have all day. No. Now, the yarn for this is called Color Adventures by Anna Diomena. I don't know. It's called Silky Merino Light. Um, and it is 70% merino and 30% silk. Well, there you go. And part of the reason I'm using this is because I got it when I was out in um, Alberta visiting my brother and sister-in-law 
and their kids, and the one kid is Meredith, and then we're doing this They're together. So sentimental. I'm very sentimental. It might just seem like it's, it's a, a nice, skinny it's yard. A gift. Yep, it's a gift. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now we're going to talk about works in progress that were and that are no longer. So first of all, I want to talk about The Birds and Ships by Caitlin Hunter. Say that fast, ten times. No, it'll get me in trouble. <laughs> now, you and I held this up, and then you, you and I both looked at it and went, hmm, maybe when you block it, it's going to be okay. And then I thought, okay, well, I could block it and see. And then I thought, I'm just going to check my tension. And it was off. I was off by a couple of stitches. So what that meant was it was too small. And even if I blocked it, it would have been okay, but I want it to have more of a drape to it. So I decided I would just rip it out. And that's I, okay to do that? You, don't you know feel, what? Right at the you moment... You don't feel bad doing that? Um, it's a small pattern. Right? It's not going to take me forever. And you still have the yarn at the end of the day. And right? I have the yarn, right? So some people... It's kind of like when you play golf. You know, if you have to hit the ball a bunch of times, you get more for your money. <laughs> Maybe that's not right. But anyway, that's how I golf. That's some analogy. <laughs> so for me, in this case, I thought I'm not, I think this is when I decide I'm not going to be happy with it. And so I'm just going to rip it out and then I will do something start, different. No, or actually, do, I'm going to start fresh. I have to do the same I, thing. Yeah, the yarn that I have, I was having extra left anyway. It's not going to cause a problem. I'm just going to increase my needle size. It'll loosen it up a little bit, and then I'll be really and happy. And you'll be happy with it. Yeah, and I'll check my tension. Because you're very seldom not happy. You you say yeah. a lot, I'm so happy, I'm so happy. But you very yeah. seldom say this kind of thing. Yeah, so. and I thought, I could really force this thing. And I'm thinking, you, you know, know I have all this yarn left. Mm -hmm. And I was the whole reason for doing this was try to use up this extra yarn. If it so, doesn't bring you joy, oh, there you go. What am I to her? Her? <laughs> <laughs> Does it bring you joy? Rip it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a little extreme, but she does have a point. All right, back to ripping it out. Now, I had purchased. You ripped something else out. I did. Oh, you've been, so you've been busy I had this month. purchased the, these two skeins to do a shawl. And I knew that this Canyon Crescent was coming out. This, actually what you're looking at is knit in this kind of yarn, okay, which is Pima Cotton by Creek Gardens Crafts. I'm curious as to why you ripped this one out. Okay, well, it's quite interesting. So <laughs> sure this story. pattern uses some of the stitches from another pattern that was a cowl. And so I was knitting along, enjoying it. The cotton's great to work with. I'm having a good time. I'm going, this looks awfully familiar. I'm thinking, well, I know it's the same stitches as the other one. And I'm just, you know, having this whole conversation in my head. Thank goodness, not talking out loud and getting interrupted by myself. Um, and I'm thinking, oh my goodness. And then I thought, oh dear. So I'm just going to have you hold these up. Okay. And then I'm going to hold this up. <laughs> is it the same thing it's not the same yarn but it's very similar now I know that this is you know, this is wool and that's cotton and I know that this is a cowl and that would be a shawl but it was so close I thought by the time I wrapped it around my neck it would look like I was wearing the same thing oh, okay. this blue is a little greener and I hadn't gotten too far in it. So I've decided to rip it out. And I thought... And keep this for something else? Yes, I'm going to keep it for something okay. else. Um, there's all kinds of people that have to use cotton because they they can't wear wool. So that's okay. So what I decided, May and I had the lovely conversation. And we mm -hmm. decided that I'm going to use this. Well, those are very different. They very are very nice. different. So the cream is uh, Cascade Heritage Sock Yarn, which you know that I love. And then the um, blue kind of uh, speckled is called Whale Song by Hugh Loco. Very lovely And color. I think it's, it's nice and light. I think it will be lovely and I think it will be nice. Um, there's a little bit of brioche in there and I think it will be pretty. Yeah, see this is what you had and this is where you're going. Yeah, and it's only because I think it was yeah, too close. And this is very different. Yeah, nice. it's going to be very different. So 
it's okay to rip things out. I don't want you to feel badly if you do. If you're not happy with what you're doing, it's important that you do that. I know I was listening to somebody, I think uh, Kate Jones, Kate Jones of the Bakery Bears, and she was talking about picking up stitches, and she said, if you are not happy with it, you need to keep going until you've picked them up and you're happy with it, because otherwise you're going to keep yeah. going. And you won't Life's too short it. to be, I, that should be a little saying, a little t-shirt. Life's too short to be stitching. <laughs> <laughs> well, not stitching, I'll work on because that. I love I'll work stitching. On that. <laughs> <laughs> so those are my works in progress, and next we're going to talk about May's Craft Adventure. My craft adventure today is a toilet paper holder. It's made out of pine. It is 23 inches long. These are one by sixes. And if you measure in two and a half inches, then three quarter inches notch, and then you do five inches, then a three quarter inch notch, five inches, three quarter inch notch, five inches, three quarter inch notch. Um, you need eight of these. Notched That's out. a lot of work for you to do. It is. That's a lot of measuring. <laughs> it is. But if you t if you half them down, mm -hmm. um, you take half of the, the board okay. and you only notch into half of it. Oh. The X's are also made from pine and uh, they are five and a half inches. So here's what I'm saying. If you take a square of five and a half inches and five and a half inches and you notch them out, and this is halfway down, you can put them together. That's fantastic. And you end up with an X. Perfect. And I ended up staining it and uh, painted the X's. But you know, Colleen, I thought this was, um, you know, it's very expensive. The wood is expensive. And it's um, pretty big. And it's very big. We have, a, we have a large washroom and we have a small washroom. This might go in the larger washroom. Um, and there's a lot of work cutting out all those notches, so I thought... <laughs> I can imagine. What can we do in order to have this look? Because I really like the look. It is. It's really a neat way to... Yeah, but we cut down the expenses and yeah. also cut down the amount of wood. Right. So I came up with this idea, if you don't mind helping. Okay, no problem. There we go. Oh, this is much smaller. This looks great. There you go. So that is... Um, Pine, but uh, oh my goodness! Okay, this board is only 16 and a half inches long. Okay, and you go five inches, then three quarters, then five inches, mm -hmm. then three quarters notch. Okay, so as you can see, it's not as much wood. No, it's, much it's smaller. amazing. And I had to think about how I was going to make the bottom ones float. Make right. look like they're floating. Right. Yeah, so it's, it's great. just like a hard board uh, backing. Right. And um, that kind of hides up the, the exactly. actual shelf. That's great. Um, these, to cut the cost down of the pine, this is all made of pine, the shelving. Mm -hmm. To keep the cost down, I made the X's from MDF, something called MDF. Right. Now, if you are working with MDF, it's important that you do wear a mask because it is kind of compressed glue. And, okay, uh, I didn't so, know that. I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. Um, so MDF now... When I cut these out, I made that I made the mistake of making the notches three quarter inches, like I oh. did on the. I oh. made these notches three quarter inches, but right. I realized these are actually with MDF um, is much uh, smaller than the pine was. Okay, so, so as you can see from this, it made the X oh, too dear. loose. Oh, this dear. was my practice piece, yeah. and then I'm glad oh, I did a little true. practice piece. Right, because. Um, it's always good to do prep. You probably Especially, find that in the yard too. Exactly. It's That's always good to do gauge practice. Gauge swatch. There you go. Yeah. And so I realized it was too loose, so then I made it smaller. Right. Um, so this this size actually will work better in our smaller washroom. Right. Absolutely. Um, I use these to hang up, and also. Oh, can you explain about this because we had a conversation about what you needed to do. Yeah. These are just um, brackets. Okay. To put on the back. All right. And you screw those in and then that will screw the wall. Because okay, you want to know how to put it on the wall. Because exactly. it weighs a lot. You can't just have the little hooks here. No. Not at all. So. Oh, I'm glad. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Um, so this will look nicer in our washroom. And, and cost effective with between the MDF and the less wood. Right. Um, it's it, a much it, better choice. Well, it is. I mean, this they both look great. I really like both of them. 
I do like the darker stain, I have to admit. Right, yes. I really like the darker stain. Well, there's a story behind that. I wanted to use darker on that, but it ended up didn't have any. Right. And um, so I used the lighter one, but it really, this is really the look I was going for. So I... Did you I'm buy this? this? Did you have to buy this? The stain, this? yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So... Great. Yeah. So there you go. That is my... Um, Project. I hope this inspires you to maybe possibly make one of these. Right. Um, it's great. And if you use those measurements, it'll turn out just fine. And my X's here are five and a half inches. Okay. Uh, they're also five and a half inches, the same as the other one. Right. And they fit in there quite nicely. Exactly. And, um, a little bit of hardwood. Not the full width the hardwood is in the right. bottom. Right. But, um, yeah, I think it turned out quite nice. Yes, you did a great job. That's really right. good. That is my craft adventure for this episode. Uh, Colleen will now do her unboxing of the Amigurumi. <gasps> Me! You said it right! <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic! My craft today comes from this kit and it's called Super Cute Crochet and then it says 10 Super Cute Projects for Animal Lovers. So there's a book with 10 uh, projects in it but in the kit itself there's just enough to make two. So what we're going to do today is unbox the kit, let you know whatever's in here. You can order this on Amazon and sometimes when there's a pandemic, you need a new craft. So we're going to try this amigurumi and see what happens. Okay, let's see what's in the box. So first of all, we have a book and it has the patterns for 10 different little animals that you can make. So that's the first thing. Now let's see what else we have. So we have some yarn and some more yarn. So as I mentioned, there's enough to make two animals. So my understanding, just from having a little look at it, is there's enough to make the penguin and the koala. Now, they also have this lovely fuzzy yarn, and that, I think, is for the koala's ears. Now, what else is in the box? Well, there's this lovely bag that has a crochet hook, safety eyes, and then it is a tapestry needle, darning needle. So everything you need to make two of these animals is in this box, and I'm really excited about it. So now we know what's in the box, now I can get started. Hope you enjoyed that unboxing. I cannot wait to see how that's going to look when I'm you're all done that. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it should be fun. Now, do you get those off Amazon? Or? Yes, they were came off Amazon. That one came off of Amazon, yeah. Wow, that's cute. Is it finicky, kind of, or you don't know? I don't know yet. I just unboxed, so we'll see how it goes. Well, I'm looking forward to uh, stay tuned to see how that's going to turn out. Yes. And next we're going to talk about souvenirs. As far as souvenirs go, they come from online. They arrive at the house and as Mays mentioned, um, they magically appear and she never sees them. So I'm the one that tends to go to the mailbox and I wipe it all down using Lysol wipes and then I put it away for a couple of days um, and then it's time. So I explained to me as we were getting ready, I said, you're going to see this thing? You've never seen it before? <laughs> Here it is. So the first thing comes from Kristen McIntyre. It's, it's maker of knitters, jewelry and other things. Now I was looking on her Etsy shop and she is kind of taking a break right now, but when she comes back, I'll put it in the show notes so you can come back. What do you so, mean taking a break? Like what do you mean? Well, when you have an Etsy shop and you need to take a break, you just say that you're taking a break so people aren't trying to make orders or getting disappointed oh. that there's nothing in your shop oh, or those okay. kind of things. So That's kind of neat. Uh, it actually, is. It's a great because way. Because if you went away on vacation and you weren't able to exactly. supply some, uh, I like that idea. Exactly. So it's just, you know, even if there's something there, they just kind of put it aside right. and wait. So what I ordered, it's going to be interesting. I'm going to explain it to me. Oh, so this is kind of cool. We may, we'll get May to take a picture of it. So what it is, is it is a chain. And then at the end, I'm going to hold my hand behind it, is this darning needle. Now it's all um, kind of wrapped and I haven't done this yet. So anyway, the darning needle will actually come out of this. I won't do it right now because I'll never put it back on. It comes out and you can actually use the darning needle. 
Oh. So there's different sizes. There was a mini one that was, I don't know, like an inch long. Uh, this one is the small one. There is a larger one. Now, if you hadn't said that, what it was, I would have looked like just like a necklace. Exactly. That's the whole plan. Oh, very nice. So anyway, I'm really, really happy with it. It's beautiful. It I was a little, nice. you know, you look at it, uh, but I'd seen one on the Cozy Up Knits. One of the twins had purchased that. Actually, maybe both twins had purchased now, that. Now, is it a... Uh, is it sterling? It looks sterling. Mm -hmm. Is it sterling? Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> this lady has an eye. Eye for cashmere, <laughs> eye for sterling. I it is. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I'm really, really happy with it. Um, I wear sterling silver all the time. So yeah, very nice. Yeah, I'm nice. really pleased with that. Um, so it's great and it's usable. It's practical. It is practical. <laughs> we'll go with that. <laughs> Let's just go with practical. <laughs> all right. Now my. Second souvenir, there's always a reason. May says there's always a reason. So the reason for this is I was watching Kay Jones at the Bakery Bears. Great podcast, so I would suggest you watch it. It's lots of fun. Um, and they just have put up an episode where they are using a drone. Oh. Oh, my goodness. It's beautiful. I want to show it to you, so okay. remind me. I'll show it to you. So anyway, they do a great podcast. I really, really like what they do. Anyway, she had been talking about Haya Haya Bamboo. There are some yarns that you need something not quite as slick as metal. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to try the Haya Haya Bamboo. So I ordered some. And this is what it came. It is, this is a small kit. That's cute. It's a little nice little pouch. Kit. So it's really, if you hold it up, it's great. Okay. So it undoes this way. And then there's a flap that opens up. So it's got seven different sets of tips. Now, I'm going to tell you something. This caused me a bit of concern. It shouldn't have, but I'm a math person. So I looked at these tips and I thought, I purchased the five inch tips. I thought, these aren't five inches long. And I thought... Okay, did I get the wrong ones? Like what happened? But this, these are actually the five inch ones. What I did was I had um, another set. These are the five inch tips. I'm happy with them. So there we go. So the cables, when you But they don't, them, they don't measure five inches. No, they don't. So I don't stress about it. It's just, if you order some and you think those look a little shorter than five inch. What I did was held up five inch tips that I have and held up those five inch tips. They weren't the same, but it's okay because I have small hands, which is helpful, but these would be great anyway. Like I really, really like them. They're now, nice is it brother. like buying wood? You know, when I buy a one by six, it's not whatever one by six. It's one you know by what? five and a half. I don't know. It may have to do something about the way that the join is. Oh. It may have to do this part. Oh, okay. I'm not sure. Um, but this is a cute little case. It is a cute little case. Um, the... I, purchased these they threw in let me show you what they threw did in. they make this little bag in there hiya hiya that's what they come with so they threw in this lovely sheep oh that needle so guide cute. which i'm thrilled and they also threw in some connectors wow that is so cute yeah i like that so i'm really happy with them and i started using them on one of the shawls that i'm working on and it's perfect for what I'm working on. So I'm really, really happy. Yeah, it's nice case. and light. You can carry it with you. Exactly. If we ever get to go away ever again. Well, <laughs> we are MC Knitting Adventures. There yeah. needs to be some adventures. I think there will be. I think we'll just have to be, um, you know, when we go and we camp and we do that kind of thing, I think that may be just the Just be kind of mindful thing. of all the things that are going on and keep your distance and wear a mask. And exactly. It's just different. And, exactly. You know, it won't be the same. No. Uh, I, I was in Walmart today and the lady in front of me was saying you remember the day we used to be able to just run in and grab something and run out it doesn't it work, doesn't that, really way work that way as you no. know so um, exactly but we'll get there i know we're surviving so sure. um right at the moment we have 689 subscribers really really so we have been 688 686 687 686 Six. But today when I looked, we're at 689. So the magic number we need to get to is 700. And when we get to 700, we are going to do a giveaway. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew up a bag. Um, I may make some stitch markers. I'll put together a progress keeper. Wow. I be some know. giveaway. It will be a giveaway. So 
please subscribe. If you like what you're seeing, give us a thumbs up. We're really glad that we can do it for you. And I'm really glad that May has taken on this crafting adventure because when we can't get out in a boat like we used to, she actually came in. Creative. She was very creative and she is a talented soul. Oh my goodness. Stop. There we go. <laughs> it's the truth. <laughs> Comment down below. Let us know what you're up to, what kind of knitting patterns you're working with, if there's any other crafts that you've been doing, anything you'd like me to give a try. She is a talented soul and she's very brave about doing that. So we're really happy that we can do this for you and we hope that you are all staying safe. Until next time, you take care.